Welcome back. I got a little project here, guys. When I go to start the um, four-wheeler, this is a Honda 400 Rancher, this sits for a period of time so I don't ride it that much, and the battery's always dead. And so what I've been doing, which is a pain, is there a little Phillips screw, is go ahead and take the battery cable off every time, and it's getting annoying. And I want to go out in the woods, and I did take the tractor out recently, and it's so long and it's wider, it's hard to maneuver it with the amount of trees and stuff without thinning out more trees. So the wheeler does make it out there better, and I want to take a card out with me. So I picked up a um, battery disconnect switch, which hopefully would be easier, just click it on, and it would shut the power off. And I'm thinking a good spot to put it. What's on here is a winch. I gotta remember how I wired that in there. It's got a little key fob remote on it. And um, I just don't remember. So we got two negative cables and we've got two positive cables. And If the parasitic draw, which is probably what it is, I've tried chasing that out and I didn't find anything wrong with it. Um, I either didn't test it right or it's intermittent or something and I just give up on it. But then I let it set a couple days, a week, a month, it won't start. So I jump started. So I took the battery cable off. It's annoying. The um, problem could be in this unit. Who knows but what I need to do is figure out where I can put it because everything's so compact ideally it'd be nice out here somewhere but I don't want just anybody to be able to turn it on and off if you mount it under the seat somewhere you know it's only one button lift the seat up and um, easy to click it on set it back down kind of thing and uh, so under the seat, I'd be considering that too, if there's room. But it's got to be where the cables are. And the other thing is, you gotta, you could either do the negative or the positive. And if we do one or the other, we should do both of them on this. If you do negative, and you ever short it underneath, it only connects the battery up. If you do positive, you got sparks. So negative is usually better on a cutoff. But these are so compact, I don't know where to put it. And the wires run up through under the shell here. And the best spot to get at them is right here. And this is where you flip the seat up. So this won't be good. Figures, right? And then down here, would work but then you know I'm cutting a hole in the plastics everything's made in China so I don't know what the quality is this is um, 300 amp intermittent and 200 amp constant um, the ratings were okay it was cheap I don't even think it was ten dollars got a cat outside sounds like it wants to come in but uh, I want to take and figure this out. So let me do a little thinking to see what's the simplest way to connect. And um, then I have to cut the cable, put ends on it. I did buy ends. I have some somewhere, but I bought a cheap kit because I could use it for other things. And Dawson's considered doing the same thing on his. And uh, I think it's a good thing to do on almost anything that sits more than a day because it's easy to leave the key on, it's easy to do something and uh, run your battery down. So let me go get that kit and then I'll be back. Well, I threw the seat back on and I'm trying to figure out where that switch can go. And I sat on here and I don't want anything here. That's where your leg goes. And if we have a rider, which you're not supposed to have, but we have a rider, they usually put their leg down in here. 
So you would rub rub on that, you know. Mm. I don't want it way up front here. I guess it would work. It's just that it, I'd have to run new cables and take all the plastics off. I was hoping to hide something like this underneath the seat. And this type of battery um, has that little screw on it. You can't buy the other style that you just disconnect. So there would sort of work. I don't want to mess up the logo. Down here, I think there's something almost in the way, but not. Um, up here, it's getting a little close to the cylinder head. It's a little hotter up there. I don't want that. Don't want to be up by the fuel tank. We're not options here. I don't want it up here. I don't want it visible up there. Um, I don't think it is what I want. The seat is flat underneath. And this comes down to there, so there's no room to leave it in here. So it has to be recessed. How come I don't get anything easy? Every project has difficulty, right? Um, I could put it, it'd be backwards, but I could put it here where I'd open up my glove box and reach up here and turn it on. That's sort of annoying too. If I want to put something in there, it'd be in the way. Like you get off, you want to shut it off. Um, but it'd be easy to wire because the battery's right here. And then once you put this cover on, let's see if that'll be in the way. See, I guess it would be in the way because of the design of the rack and the curve in this. It's got to be down very low so that it can click in. I could put it in this, but then the cables have to be long. And you don't want to touch the battery coming out. And this thing is pretty big. You know, it stick down a good inch and a quarter. So if this rack was up flush with this one, and this just snapped on there, it would be different, but it doesn't. we got to think this out so we don't make holes and everything. Not a lot of room above the battery. How come nothing's easy? If I went into the side, there's a frame rail here. The shock is there. There's not depth here. And that'll be in the way of the handle anyway. Hmm. But the wiring is here. That's why I wanted it here. Keep it clean and simple. And like I said, if it was in there, I could recess it inside of there, but the wires would have to go through there too. And that would give a possibility, I don't know if it would, of getting water up into the battery box area. Probably not. Hmm. Never a straightforward, simple video. Anywhere there's plastic, there's metal underneath it. Not really room enough to tuck it down in anywhere, you know. If we do the negative cable, then I'm not too worried about sparking on anything, you know. No plastic under here. But... It'd be nice to have it firm so that I could click and click without hanging on it with two hands, especially if you've got gloves on, if it's winter time, something like that. So we're probably leaning more toward out here where it's going to be sort of in my way. I took this little clip out and if it mounted in there, I have to grab a tape measure and measure that. Let me do a little more thinking. I'll have to pop out a couple more clips probably to be able to drill this. Looks like the side cover is the only place to put it. And I shouldn't say that. I could put it in the glove box, but that's kind of a strange spot. And like I said, I think it'll be in the way. It'll be hard to get in there and try to turn that. So it looks like we're looking right there. Here might work also. Probably be easier there, but the wiring 
Yeah, the wiring is not too far from there. Um, what would you do, guys? Would you put it here or there? The wiring is here. I could feed it down under the fender. And the fender is open there. So I can put my hand right up here. See that? And there's nothing in the way here. This maybe is a better spot. And to get this off, you pull this, this, and that comes upward. I don't know if that'll be in the way. If you'd have to service anything in here, you have to pull the side cover off. If it was in here, you'd have to back the nut off. Have to disconnect the wires back to nut off. Take it. You'd have to tear it all apart. Where down here, I wouldn't tear anything apart. I guess I probably should go in that. So let me put the seat back on and see where that's going to be located. If that works. What's in the way here? Stuff's in the way. I got. This is a 50 amp circuit breaker is what that is. I was wondering what that was for the, for the winch. All right, so if this was mounted down here, it's a little awkward if it's here. Probably the best spot. Let me sit here and see what we got. Yeah, I don't think I'll ever touch my leg on it there. Popping wheelies, maybe. So, I guess we're going into the fender. Let's start butchering up the Honda, right? But we got to have something here to, to work. I probably could go lower and put it down in there. But, again, I don't want the wires. Yeah, this metal frame in the way. And that goes into a metal. That won't work. So, we got to stay up in here where there's nothing. So... The back of this, it's pretty large. It's like an inch. Is it a quarter? It's an inch and, no, it's almost an inch and a half. Heavy one and three eighths. And then it's got two flats. So I can't just drill a round hole either because I don't want this thing to turn. I wish they had a better keyway system. Once you lock once you lock the nut up, I guess it'll probably be firm, but then again, the quality, see the nut? Quality's not there. Is, um, I should probably make the hole with like a uh, roto zip or something where I can come up and make it a flat spot. So it's gonna take some time to make that pattern so let me get a probably a piece of cardboard, make me a template. Everything's a project, not a five minute job. Let me find something to cut out. All right, I did a circle. You probably got a little glare, but um, one and one and a half inch. So I'll be cutting on the inside of the line. And then the two flats represent the side so that when it's installed, I'd like it in that position, so on, off, and so I got this little Dremel thing with a, uh, I don't know what you call that, reamer bit, I don't know, I'm not sure it'll cut it well, otherwise I have to go out and hunt up a, uh, a set of drill bits or something, but this is plastic, so let's see what this will do. I haven't used this in a while. And, um, there's nothing underneath it, so.
That actually worked awesome. It looks like it's a little small still, which is the way to do it. You don't want to go large. And then I'll spin this nut off in there. What I want to do is bring the wires up through, do the connection, push it down in. And this is my hopes. Of course, I have to put the nut on to the wires first, but the quality of products you buy anymore is not too great. So how small is it? It is close. It is pretty close. So let me stay. I stayed inside the line. I'll go a little bit large here. See that bit? That's pretty sharp. I'm not sure what it's called. Some kind of reamer. We're butchering up our plastics. Plastics on this is a it's a 2004. And the thing is like in awesome shape. No cracks or nothing. It's nice to keep them that way if you can. Oh, it's almost there. It's in the hole. Now, check it out, it's almost in there. So, now, I'm going to come out to my line a little bit. Check that out, guys. It's on and off, on and off. See that? We can do anything. Look how nice that fits. So, let's see if it interferes with the seat. That would be a real bummer. Don't think it does. And then, oh, let's see here. from a seat that's where your hand goes and a little water drain I like that that doesn't look too bad and then now we're gonna wire it so I got some heavy wire I don't know the gauge I think it's six should be able to carry almost a hundred amps it's a tiny battery um, and this is up to 50 amp wire and I've got it larger than that one so I think we'll be good so now we gotta pop this back out it fits so good there. We're gonna unhook our negatives, bring them both over, bring them up through, and then take two new negatives and run them over to the negative. And then just hook the positives back up. There's our positive. Our other positive's disconnected. We'll disconnect the negative. That's a pretty large cable. I might have to put a different end on it. So here's our negative from the winch. We want to bring that down. And then here 
is our negative cable. And that goes down through there. So I'm going to have to fish that all the way down around the air box and then up through. Hopefully it'll reach. It looks like it will. So I have to get a light underneath there so I can see. All right, the negative cable is long enough. There's still a little bit more under there. So that's, see, that's a nice heavy end on it, but it might be too large for what we got to do. And this one is too small. So we'll have to put a new end on that. And this one looks a little small. I believe this is 3 eighths. That looks like 5 sixteenths or a quarter. I might be able to drill it out, but you see how wide it is? I think I have to just cut the end off, which is a shame. I kind of want to keep the factory stuff together. I want to make sure I get it in there. I probably could. Let me see if I can reach it underneath there so I wouldn't have to fish it up through, you know. It's kind of difficult underneath there and make everything compact. So remember we got to bring four wires up. That's why I wanted something easy. Um, it's just got a huge end on it. I guess if we ever come back to this, which we probably won't, we could um, maybe save this end. I'll throw it in the box. And um, We'll just put new ends on both of these. And two of them will go to one side and the other two will go back to the battery. And actually it won't have to go to the battery. I think just one goes to the battery. I won't need two. We just need to pick up our ground. And so uh, I got some cable here. And it's pretty hefty stuff. Got a little damage down there, but we only need, and it's the wrong color, we only need about 18 inches of it anyway. So let me strip some of this back and see what this looks like. I think this cable will work, and then I've got some ends we can put on. All right, I stripped this end of the cable. That's nice, heavy. How many strand? Looks like six strand copper. So that's got to handle, you know, like 60 amp or whatever. Um, I'm going to strip this end. I should get my connectors handy, see how long I want them. We need, this kit was like 10 bucks and I thought, well, I'll get it. It's got shrink, tubing, and copper connectors are pretty good and usually when you have a wire that's a wrong color like this you uh, tape the end or color the whole thing so we probably ought to slide shrink tubing on it and then pick one that'll fit the size wire we're using we don't need that big do we or do we Let's see what they show here. 2 gauge, 4 gauge, 6, 8, 12. So I want to be down the 3 8 terminals, 2 gauge. And this terminal will fit. And let's see what we got. Will they fit in there? They will. Be nice to give that a decent crimp and solder. Hmm. See if I can find my soldering gun. You know, we're doing this garage project here with the drywall and everything. I removed almost everything out of here. It's hard to find anything now. So this one will work. I don't know if it's heavy duty enough for me. Let's see what else we got. Those are too big. This is too big. This, there we go. This looks much better. 
this is eight to 10 gauge, but I know this is at least six gauge. I want to be able to crimp it down enough. Oh, what gauge is this one? This says six to eight. So I guess I could probably use the smallest one. And it fits on the wire well. So we'll cut this shorter. I like them when they come all the way through and when you give them a crimp. But we'll cut off a chunk of this. These old pliers seen better days. These are the ones I was remodeling the kitchen and the homeowner was there and we were testing out some other circuits not related. It was a dining room. He said a couple outlets didn't work and I said, well, uh, let me check the circuit. And I pulled the outlet out and he goes, I'll go shut the breaker down. I said, well, let me go do it. And he goes, no, I know what one, they're labeled. I said, all right, well, never do that. Because he livened it up or he shut off the wrong one. He says, it's gone, it's off. So I put my pliers in there. I was going to cut the wire because the outlet was burnt. And this one's, I was like, whoa, thanks for turning it off. That's perfect. So what we'll do is we'll slide a negative heat shrink on there. Let's see what sizes they give you. Pretty heavy wire here. Put the tubing up on there. Oh yeah, there we go, just barely. Ugh. There. So I gotta get a crimp, crimp to add on. That'll reach our negative. And then it's gonna end up being at least four more inches so I can fold the little back. It won't be tight. And then I gotta strip this end. And then we know how much now, about a half an inch is all we need. It's pretty heavy stuff. Not the right tool. And I'm gonna do the same on this wire. And I think what I'll do is I'll just put these two on one lug and the one from the battery back to the other lug. So. That way the winch won't be active while this is turned off. That makes good sense. So we'll go to number two. Perfect. Another shrink. Not a solder -er, but I think if we could get some solder in, it's a little bit better than a crimp. And let's see what this uh, factory one is. Is that a solder? It's not, it's just a crimp. Yeah, just a crimp. So crimp your work for that many years. Maybe a crimp will work if I can get a good crimp on it. All right, I got these clipped, stripped, and the shrink on. This negative, I don't, you know, I forgot to put the shrink on it, didn't I? You get the shrink on that big one, and then it is a little bit larger wire, so that's probably a four gauge. I don't have four gauge, only six, so it's what we're going to use. I don't know what the amperage the system is, but you slide the shrink on there. It's the next gauge up. Use what you got, run what you got. Better than nothing, right? Everybody's gonna yell at me. You don't do it like that. All right, so now, 
this is a winch negative. Make sure they all fit inside. I don't know if this cheap little tool will work or not, but we'll see. Yeah, I think so. I want to get some. That's tight, but I want to get some uh, solder in there too. It would be real nice. If I can do this one or not. <clears throat> You always give it the tug test. I don't know. I think I'd solder it. So I'll probably hook up my solder and see if I can do that. Let me try this end on there. Will it work? Crimp away. Mm. Well, they they tight. I've got to get the next size bigger for that one because that won't quite fit in there. So it's a shame I don't have that gauge wire and I'm not going to go buy it. So this run is only. What did I say? About 16 inch. So we need to go up one notch. Let's see what this one says. Probably a four gauge. This is hard to read. I think it says 10 8. Probably mixed up in here. Yeah, that's the wrong one. Yeah, they're in the wrong spot. This one is tiny to read. I can't even read it. But it's the next size bigger, so that's probably the one. Probably. It's almost too big. All right, the one in the middle. Monkey in the middle. Well, you can read this one. It's like this is six ten. There we go. Perfect fit. to get one of them uh, nice crimping kits so this old-fashioned thing but I think I ought to heat these up put a little solder on them so I know we don't have to come back and revisit it you know what I mean and then we gotta have one more for the battery cable and this one has to fit that bolt so it can be smaller I'm going to set my bolt with a screw for the battery. Yep, this will work, I think. Perfect. And yeah, it's getting late tonight. I thought I wanted to come out and monkey with this a little bit because. I really want to get out in the woods because the snow is going to come early this year, I have a feeling. 
and I need this to to start every time I want it to. <clears throat> I don't know. The charging system we checked recently, and that works really good. I think it was 14.2 to 14.6, and then it didn't have a draw when I checked it, but apparently there's a draw. And so hopefully this will cure it. All right, so we're done with these guys. Now I'm gonna hunt up a soldering iron if I can find one. And then, there's, that'll go over to that. These two on one side. The big one and this on one side and this on the other side. So there we go. So let me go find the tools. Well, I found my solder, but the solder and iron won't get hot enough. So I'm going to use a torch. Let's see how many guys who yell at that. I really want the added strength. So I'm going to warm the connector up. And see if it will suck the solder right in it. Not the worst idea I've had. These other ones are kind of close to the plastics here. Let's see. Prop these up with something. Need more hands. But that crimp, I don't know if I trust them, you know. my head's in your way. Suck it right in there. See that bubble? Don't heat your solder. Always heat whatever you're soldering. Eh, I've seen better. This one looks really good and this one I gotta get that heat shrink down or I'll be melting that right away. Probably not that important on the negative anyway, but let's see if we can do this without melting any plastics here. A couple more inches of cable be nice. Ugh. See what we can do here. I want it right down in that little access hole. you could tin your wires first, right? Not at the right angle. Fill that right up. There, like that, see it? 
And that's going to grip on our wire. Let's see what we did. That looks good. I think they're going to work. That one's not very pretty. But it's definitely on there good. Sounder come right up and out. Well, let's put our shrinky on there if it will. Kind of melted this sheeting a little. I got the cat hollering out there. Wants dinner, I guess. Cool it. I guess I'll just warm that up. <laughs> Good enough for that. These don't really even need it. I don't know. Positive, you really gotta make sure they're covered. I hope this is all worth the effort and it works, being a Chinese switch, you know? Not saying everything they make is bad. But a lot of things you return. Yeah, I can do this without not anything else. What do you think? You seem better, right? I think it'll work. And they're copper, copper wire. So I don't think we'll have a corrosion issue. And it's right under the fender where I can get to it. And it'll unscrew easy. So now, what I gotta do, is I was gonna quit, wasn't I? But I might continue. I gotta get the nut pushed down on the wires, take off the, a nut, and then off on. It probably doesn't matter which side you go on to. But I want to make sure I can fit them on and get them down in there. So that's what I'm going to work on now. The nuts are a half inch. All right. I got the nut on there. I took these two off. On, off. So the ground to the machine, the ground to the battery. So one on one side and the other two on the other side. And I hope I can bend the wire enough to get it down in there. So I'll do the negative. And then I'll do the um, winch negative. Mock washer. And not. I don't know if this works. I invested more than I wanted to. I, I knew I had the connector somewhere, but because I just recently moved everything out of the garage, I can't find nothing. Um, I got about $20 in this, so that's kind of more than I wanted to spend. I think this was $8.99, and then the connectors, I think, were... I think they were $10.99. But if we're gonna do two machines like that, it's probably a good, good way to do it. So once we get these on, I gotta be able to fish this down in there. So now this one is going to the battery, the new cable we made up. Hope it's large enough. It should be 55 or 60 amp. If it's six gauge copper, I think it's something like that. I mean, I'm sure it'll work. I think the way to test it good would probably be have the engine running and then run the winch. But the only thing I've been using the winch for is I haven't got the machine stuck yet. Well, I shouldn't say that. I got it stuck once down 
by the road and uh, I was on an uphill so I just backed up. But uh, it kind of snug. I don't want to break them. But, um, I use the winch to lift the snow plow up and down, if, you know, so it's not like. It's not like. Oh, I did that wrong. How can you tell me, guys? Doing this for practice. I need this nut down inside the fender first, not on top of the fender. <sighs> do it twice. You get better the more you do it. And you got to make mistakes on film. If you watch Ken's Carpentry, he made a big one today. And it's, um, he builds garages, and I think he thought the pitch was 512. And the trusses ended up being 612, so he put his gable end plywood up first before his truss set, and then they're all wrong. So he wasted a couple sheets and did it on film, and he says, Yeah, I'm not gonna edit it, which tends to make a better film because it's real life, you know, you kind of get in a hurry and you want to go time, and sometimes it's better to go slower, it's faster, you know. Go slower, it's faster. So I gotta push the wires down in the hole, then put the nut on. From the underside. Not this way, foolish. And then push them back up in and put them on. Not a big deal. Not a big dill pickle, right? Let's uh, fish them back in there. There's two, three. Now the nut is on correctly. That cat's still hollering. I think it's the old squirrel. He wanted to go out and scout, so he wants this 20 minute snack. Hold on. That was the squirrel. He wanted a snack. Okay, so start this all over again. So. Get this in the position I kind of want it in. So that these are relaxed. I want to, let's see here. This is the winch. This is this other side. Like this and this. See, a simple project like this takes forever. I have trouble estimating my time. I, uh, you know, been doing contracting work for forever, 30 some years. And I don't know if it's a personality, you talk to people, you kind of like the customer, what, what the deal is to where, well, this is the best deal I can give you. And then, once you get started, there's like, oh, I forgot that, or this could take longer, or they come out and they say, well, what if we did this because it would look better, and you kind of agree to it without a change order, and you're doing free work, and that's what I tend to do a lot, and um, ideally, you know, if there was a book time on how long to install a door or window or faucet or something like that, you know, but everything is different. It all depends on depends, you know, depends, depends. And I underestimate a lot of times. So they're pretty snug. I don't want to overdo it. Let's see if we can fish it down in there and bring that nut up. So it's right where we need it. Get this up at the right angle. Hey, don't look too bad in there. You gonna get that nut to spin on there? That Chinese thread. Can't knock them. We gave them all this money for years and years to make our stuff, make it cheaper. That's what we get. Can't knock them for it. We're buying it. It's our fault. Definitely not their fault. We buy their products, Harbor Freight, you know. I'm gonna 
welcoming all them businesses in while we're not working. Or I shouldn't say we're not working, but we're not making quality products anymore. Now, I don't know if I can tighten this by hand enough. I definitely don't want to get a wrench and crank city on it. I don't know if it'll vibrate loose, you know. It's up touching now. Let's see if I can get in a little bit of hand torque on it. I don't want to go crazy because I could put a dab of silicone on it or something if I had to. <sighs> okay, that's that looks pretty good. Let me show you the underneath here, what it looks like. The underneath here. We got negative cables, they're up away from everything. The muffler is on the other side, right? Yes, so there's no heat on this side. And the cables are free. There's This is a plastic air horn thing for the intake. So there's nothing metal that can rub on it. So we're in good shape there. It'll probably get a little mud on it. Let's see how it works here. It's on now. Off. Back you up here. On. I like that. That looks attractive. The colors, black and red, look good on the machine. It kind of looks factory, even though it's not. It's not Japanese, right? Now what we got to do is we'll put our positive cables on, and then we'll put our negative cable on, and then we'll test it. And then these are just a square nut underneath there that doesn't turn and we've got let's see here gotta keep our cables out of the way keep this circuit breaker down somewhere hopefully down and then this cable a couple inches extra under there this will get bent under the loop. And then our positives over here. So this one will go on top. Wish the screws are a whisker longer. And I hope this does a trick. Probably when I get this done, it'll be the negative or the positive cable that I should have put the cutoff on. It's hard to catch that knot. Is the screw so short? Do I have it? I think so. Yep. Cover that up. And then this isn't pretty coming across here. This probably ought to be on this side. Down in there, that looks better. And this should have been back under here, be better. But it's not long enough, I think that's a problem. I don't know, everything's kind of tight. You want to stay away from the seat bracket. It'd be nice to keep it under this wire loom clip here. I don't know if this will turn flat. It still won't go into the loom. And then we'll take our negative in. You know, I'll probably wrap more tape on that. That's what I ought to do. Because red is positive, black is negative, and I know what to look on the battery before I hook a cable, but if I have Dawson riding it or something and it, you know, goes dead or something, I want him to know it's negative and not hook the cables up wrong. So we'll just color code this. That heat shrink. Oh, I thought we broke it. There. Nice. Let me warm that up quick. I thought we heated up. Nice. And then 
color code this thing so it's all black. No mistake in it. I know, don't tear it. Okay. Then, bring this around, put a little kink in it, like so. And then this finder, the bolt I threw over here in this pile, so I ended up getting more tools. And you know what? I didn't don't have a key on me. I gotta go get the key. See if we got any battery power here. I don't think I have an electric meter out. Yeah, I guess I do have a meter out here to test this. Check it, but there. This goes like that. It should go like that. Let's see if our seat fits on there before we do anything. Because that circuit breaker is kind of a fat object there. Kind of a weird spot to put it. Let's see if everything clears here. No? Yes, no, maybe? Should, right? And then we're on. We'll turn that off. Should have had it off. Yeah, nothing's in the way. So let me uh, run in, grab a key, test this bad boy out. Hasn't been started in a while. All right, I got the key. The previous owners had a bear on it. Rancher. Must be they like beer too. Um, let's see what she does. Oh, got no power. How come? How about this? Hey, we got digitals. All right. And if we shut this off, does it, does it also kill switch? I don't know. That must be the charging system's good. So I'll turn it off. Turn that off. Key on. Nothing's happening. Got no power. Turn this on. Now I got lights. Let's see if I got lights, lights. Yeah. And then uh, let's see. We should start. Yeah. So. If I kill the switch, I don't know if you can see this. I got this light propped up here. Let me get rid of this thing now. Get rid of this thing now. Okay. So the switch is turned off. I got the key in the on position. Nothing works. Um, I'm going to turn the winch on, which is a little remote here. Nothing. Now I'm going to turn my switch on down here in the fender. We got lights. We got winch. So, and we got start. Wish this had LED lights, right? I think we're in business. So what do you think of that, guys? I got the choke on, don't I? Runs pretty good for an oldie, and it's got, oh, what do we got for mileage here? Let's see, trip odometer, at 298 on the hour meter, GPS, where's the mileage? I think the mileage on here, trip reset, 298 hours. There we go, 2381 miles. So 2300 miles, and the thing is in pretty nice shape. But like I said, it's annoying if the battery 
it's still drawing juice when it's sitting and this way you know you can't operate the winch now with a without the uh, switch turned on I think that's a good thing to install and I'm going to turn this off see what happens Lights flicker is all. Um, I don't know. I think it makes sense. So, so we'll shut her down. Turn this off. Turn the key on. See, my lights are left on. Nothing happens now, and I can't start it. So the switch does work. And uh, you got high voltage. LEDs. Maybe I'll hunt up some LED balls. It's definitely brighter. If you watch Dawson's channel, he's been playing on his uh, his uh, brute, and that's got some LEDs on it. It's pretty bright. So, hey, thanks for watching. Nice little neat install. I'm going to go ahead and put the rest of this together. So I just got to remember to turn this off. So we're dead. Key out. Key in. Nothing. Turn this on. All right. All right. I like it. Time to go play now. What I want to do is I want to go out in the woods, bring in some firewood, and I want to use a... Uh, little trailer I got you might have saw me repairing it in a video and oh I gotta close my glove box I'm gonna show you the hitch that little hitch down there looks like it'll work good for a wagon like this you know where you're going in and the pin goes through both sections but that trailer has a, a ball type hitch so I'm wondering if I can put a bolt in it and still use it it'll probably tear up that sticker there um, I also have a garden cart, one of them larger ones I could take out. So one of the two I want to use in the woods. Throw a chainsaw, bar oil, that kind of stuff in there, and uh, probably take a chain out to drag a log a little bit, because we got to go get some wood in. Hey, thanks for watching. I thought it was going to be a simple video, but we did some, some uh, wiring. We drilled the body out. We put that switch in. It's not too ugly. Shouldn't affect the value here too much. Um, I only cut the clip off the main wire, so that can also go back up there in the future if somebody wants to take that little winch thing off in there. The winch is designed to go down underneath. This one would not fit under there. I just threw it up there. I know better to have a winch high because that's a way to flip a machine, but it, you just got to use your brains about it. Don't get on something crazy with it. Um, but... It works great to lift the snow plow up and down. And then, uh, let's see, we did a little bit of soldering, we did some crimping, we did some heat shrink, and we put the, the kill switch in. So I think this is worth it, about 20 bucks. And then I'll, I'll probably order another one of them switches. They're like, I think it was $8.99. Get one for Dawson. I think he wants one on his machine. He went out to start his recently, and his was dead. So I don't know if everything has a parasitic draw or anything that has a winch draws or I don't know electronics anymore. Maybe the computer runs. Well, actually, this is a GPS model. Um, it's a digital dash. And um, when you turn the, it's got a clock and everything on it. And so I would imagine that's going to use power. It's got to use power. So you let it run for you know, a month without usage, and it's a tiny battery to begin with, you know, it'll probably run it down. So the next best thing to do is put a um, battery maintainer on it, desulfator, a little one amp jobby or something, 
and um, just keep them on them all winter, you know. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.